In this video, to change the timing belt on a 1 liter EcoBoost engine. Hi guys, today I've brought a Ford engine to show you. Here we have a 1 liter 92 kilowatt EcoBoost engine from a 2013 Ford Focus 3 with a code M1DA. To replace the timing belt you need the CT1198K1 timing belt kit. The fitting kits MS54, 55 and 56 containing the bolts and any other necessary material as well as our V09 and V10 toolboxes. You need the following tools from our toolboxes for setting the timing. As usual, we are using an engine that has been removed. It's different for you in the workshop, of course. You'll have to remove a few parts first before you can work properly on the engine. Among other things, you need to remove the multi-V belt, including tensioner, the air conditioning compressor, alternator, turbocharger intake hose, exhaust manifold, catalytic converter and undershield. That's a huge amount to do. The guideline time allowance for labor is 6.8 hours. But it's difficult to complete the work within this time frame, especially at the first attempt. Many mechanics have told me that two days isn't uncommon for the first time, so allow yourselves plenty of time for it. Here we have a belt change interval of 240,000 kilometers or 10 years. The engine first arrived on the market in 2012, so it's been around for more than 10 years now. This engine has sold in the millions of units, meaning millions of them will be coming into the workshop. If you haven't had any job requests for one yet, you're bound to start getting them soon. We need four tools when setting TDC at cylinder one. There is a bolt here on the side, which I'm about to unscrew, and then I'll screw in a locking pin. Here at the front, we have a centering pin for the crankshaft pulley. At the top, there are two adjusters that have to be removed, and then a tool is inserted in their place. And we also have to remove the valve cover, so that two tools can be placed on the camshafts. So, I removed the valve cover and camshaft adjusters. I'm now going to unscrew the small bolt at the side here, underneath the oil filter, and screw in this locking pin in its place. If the engine isn't yet at TDC, but just before it, once you've turned the crankshaft so it's pushing against the pin, you'll be able to insert this small centering pin into the crankshaft belt pulley. You can now position the two tools and the locking clamps on the camshafts as an additional check. Make sure to remove them again though, as they only serve to check the position. Now it's time to undo the bolt for the crankshaft belt pulley at the bottom here. For this job, we need our toolbox V10 with the torque multiplier, which has to be attached first. And to avoid damaging any locking tools, they must all be removed again. I've now removed all the locking tools. You have to use the flywheel locking tool, which you fit in place of the starter motor before attaching the supporting arm and the torque multiplier. I fitted the locking tool for the flywheel. I can now screw on the supporting arm at these two points. You'll have to remove the drive shaft first though, before it actually fits here. I've now attached my torque multiplier, so it's time to undo the crankshaft belt pulley's bolt. I do this by using a suitable tool, after which I can remove the front cover. I've removed the front cover. Now you have to fit the tools for the camshaft adjusters and the camshafts. Watch out with the tools for the camshaft adjusters. In the original instructions and other accessory fitting instructions, the same part number is always used in reference to both tools. However, they are actually different. You can tell that from the lobes. One has them at the top, the other at the bottom. So we have to pay very close attention here. We have labeled our tools. One of them is marked X and the other IN. And here we have an I for inlet and here an E for exhaust. The tools have to be fitted on the correct side. 
If you don't watch out, the tools could also fit when the engine is 180 degrees out of position. The tools would then be the other way around, with IN and X mixed up. But we'd be able to tell that from the camshafts, as we're about to see. First fit the tools the right way around, with IN on this side and X on that side. Take the two tools for the camshaft adjusters at the front off again. They won't stay in place on their own, and we'll need them again later. Take a look at the camshafts to check whether the engine is in the right position. If there are three flattened faces here, the engine is correctly positioned. If it was 180 degrees out of position, there would be a curved surface at the top here instead of this flat edge. Now you can place the two clamps on top and secure each of them with two screws. I've got everything in the right place. Now you need to loosen the tensioner pulley. Here we have an automatic tensioner pulley, so we just have to press it together, lock it with a cotter pin and then remove the belt and tensioner pulley. So I've taken off the old belt. Before starting to replace the parts, you should consider whether to replace the oil pump belt at the same time. Here we have a belt in oil driving the oil pump. You can only reach this belt by first removing the timing belt for the camshaft drive. To be able to replace this belt, you would have to remove the oil sump and oil pump too. Unfortunately, you can't get to it from above. You might think there was enough room and the belt would come off very easily. However, there's a plastic spray guard that is bolted on from below. It's made from hard plastic that can't be bent out of the way, meaning you can't get the belt past it. So dismantling the oil sump is unavoidable if you want to replace this belt. You will also find this belt in our range. We stock it at both an individual belt and as part of a complete pro kit. I've got rid of all the old components now. Before I start to fit the new parts, here's a quick safety tip. The tensioner pulley has to be fitted in a specific position. We have a lobe here that has to be inserted into this bore hole at the bottom. The tensioner pulley can then be screwed securely into place. Once that has been done, we fit the new timing belt, starting at the crankshaft, then continuing in a counterclockwise direction, passing it around the camshafts, and finally the tensioner pulley. So you fitted the timing belt, now it's time to tension it. There's a pin here in the tensioner pulley that you need to pull out. It's an automatic tensioner pulley, so there's nothing else we can adjust. Once we've taken the pin out, the tension is set. There's no need to turn the engine over a few times either. Next you have to clean the contact surfaces of the engine and front cover. Our MS-54 fitting kit contains two sealing rings for this front cover. There's a smaller sealing ring for the coolant channel here and the oil seal for the cover at the bottom. I'll show you how to fit that later. There's another special tool in our toolbox for that job. You now apply manufacturer-approved adhesive to the front cover, making sure that you then bolt the cover into place within the next 10 minutes. The bolts for the front cover need to be tightened in four stages. First stage, bolts 1 to 2 by 5 newton meters, bolts 3 to 6 by 10 newton meters, bolts 7 to 16 by 5 newton meters. Second stage, bolts 3 to 6 by 40 newton meters, then bolts 3 to 4 by 17 newton meters, bolts 5 and 6 by 17 newton meters. Bolts 1 and 2 by 9 newton meters, bolts 7 to 16 by 15 newton meters. Third stage, bolts 3 and 4, 90 degrees, bolts 5 and 6, 90 degrees, bolts 1 and 2, 90 degrees, bolts 7 to 16, 90 degrees, bolts 17 to 19, 10 newton meters, bolts 20, 10 newton meters. Fourth stage, bolts 17 to 19 by 10 newton meters and bolts 20 by 10 newton meters. The new oil seal can be fitted using our pressing tool. We take the old seal off, then insert the tools bolt into the opening for the crankshaft bolt and press it all in tightly. You've now fitted the front cover in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. I'd recommend attaching the tools at the top again as a final check.
Before you can fit the new crankshaft belt pulley, you'll need this small diamond-coated friction ring. This ring is only used when servicing vehicles. It's not fitted at the factory. So don't panic if you didn't notice one before. It hasn't fallen into the oil sump. Ford simply doesn't fit it in new engines. It's only needed when the belt pulley is removed during a vehicle service. The friction ring is designed to stop the pulley from twisting when tightening the bolt. Do check first though whether there was already an old friction ring there. It's possible that someone already removed the crankshaft belt pulley in the past and added one. Only one friction ring must be fitted, so if you find one, replace it with a new one. The crankshaft belt pulley is then refitted using a new bolt. Screw the bolt in by hand first, insert the locking pin again and then tighten the bolt in a number of stages. In the first two stages, the bolt is tightened with the locking tools attached, 25 Newton meters in the first stage and 70 Newton meters in the second. Next, remove all locking tools and attach the torque multiplier. The torque multiplier is used for the final six stages. We start with 60 Newton meters, followed by five turns of 90 degrees. You're nearly finished now. You just have to remove all the tools and reassemble the engine in reverse order. And don't forget to add our seal of quality before letting this gem of an engine back onto the road. Place our part replacement sticker in the engine compartment where it's clearly visible so your customer sees you have fitted quality.